the new chapter for the session is binomial theorem now but before we discuss about what exactly is the binomial theorem let's get into introduction on understanding what is a binomial now we have now that we have already discussed about the polynomials now let's come back from polynomials to derive that what exactly is a bi bi binomial so suppose i have a polynomial function which has only one term that is if there is 3x or anything else like this then such a polynomial is called a monomial because it has only one term now if the polynomial has two terms it is called binomial because bi refers to two the word mono refers to one and then the word tri refers to three therefore binomial which has the word bi implies a polynomial with two terms so that is if i have p of x say for example is 3x square minus 4x then this is a binomial because it has two terms one and two has two terms is how we understand now proceeding with the trinomial we know that if i have 2 plus 3x minus 4x square then it has three terms one two and three and hence is called trinomial has three terms etc so the topic of binomial theorem is exclusively to study on this kind of terms which we have called the binomial polynomials the polynomials which has two terms which we are going to study in brief on their expansions so let's see how we can study the binomial expansion and what are the various other properties related to the binomial expansions now let's study what exactly is the binomial expansion that is i take a binomial say x plus y and then in this case i raise with power one then what do i get when i raise this with power one let's see what happens if this binomial is raised to power one then i get this as x power one plus y power 1 which comes as x square as x plus y is what we get when x plus y is raised to power 1. Similarly, when I raise this to power 2, then I have this as a square plus 2ab plus b square which we have already seen. Now, when I raise this to power 3 as cube, I have a cube plus 3a square b plus 3ab square plus b cube and next when i raise this to power 4 i get this when expanded by taking into 2 into 2 i get this if i expand and through this formula and expand i get this x power 4 plus 4 x cube y 6 x square y square plus 4x y cube plus y power 4. So in each of these cases, I find that there are various properties which are connected with this. So what are the properties which are connected with these are very important. So if I go with this, what will be this is the biggest question which we're going to discuss as binomial theorem. So before we do that, we have to understand each of the contents of this. Now, as I see here, each of the powers is referred with n and each of this is referred as a binomial and each of these are referred as binomial terms and their coefficients. Let's see how we connect each of the binomial coefficient expansions as obtained here. So let's take the binomial coefficients that is the coefficients of each of the terms here in this case being 1 comma 1 so these are the coefficients identified here and then for this let the coefficients be 1 2 1 because here the coefficients are 1 2 1 and here 
we have identified the coefficients as 1, 3, 3, 1 is how we get. And in case of the fourth one being 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 is what we get. And therefore, this becomes 1, 4, 4, 1. Now, as I see these expansions, I see that this is called the binomial expansion because this is the one which is being expanded and each of these terms are called are called the binomial terms so each of the terms are called the binomial terms for all of them and these are called the binomial coefficients <laughs> so it is very important to know the three basic structures one is the binomial expansion on the left side and once expanded each of the terms are called binomial terms and the coefficients attached to the terms are called binomial coefficients now as the expansion changes with the power the binomial coefficients also equally change now we will try to study the relation between the coefficients of each of n when increased suppose i have next n equal to 5 then i wanted to know what are my binomial coefficients when n is 5 n is 6 n is 7 so definitely the coefficients of n equal to 5 and 6 are always related with the previous coefficients and let's see how the binomial coefficients are connected to each other for all n belonging to z plus now let's construct the binomial coefficients using the triangular form of representation so let's see how that can be done say i have the binomial expansion x plus y whole power n then for each n we have the binomial coefficients which were constructed from n equal to 1 to n equal to 4 therefore let's take n equal to 1 is the index first I have taken here and then let's see what happens for n equal to 1. When n equal to 1 my expansion was x plus y whole power 1 and I got the binomial coefficients as 1 and 1 is what we have obtained here. Now when n is equal to 2 I get my binomial coefficients as 1, 3, 1. 1 to 1 which is obtained by just taking this in the form of 1 and this is obtained by adding these two with this I get 2 and then I get this is 1 so these two ones add up to give 2 that is 1 plus 1 gives me 2 <coughs> similarly when n is equal to 3, I get here 1 and then I add up these 2 to give 3. Then I add up these 2 which gives me 3 and then I get this last one which is 1. So each of the terms is obtained by adding the pairs of the previous row that is say let's try for n equal to 4 that is when I take n equal to 4 then in this case my 1 here this and this adds up as 1 plus 3 to get 4 and this and this adds up 3 plus 3 to give 6 and this and this adds up as 3 plus 1 to give me 4 and always the first and last terms are always 1 let's construct for n equal to 5 because we didn't do the expansion of n equal to 5 in the previous session but I can find the binomial coefficients for n equal to 5 by just utilizing the binomial coefficients of the previous rows. So when n is 5, I come with 1 and this and this adds up to give 5, then this and this adds up to give 10, and this and this adds up again 6 plus 4 to give 10, and this and this adds up to give 5, and 1 is fixed, etc. So this is how the binomial coefficients can be constructed in continuous process. <coughs> so that is how I understand 
the expansions as done through the Pascal triangle because when you just join this this is called the Pascal's triangle which we get and then we get this I get is how I get the Pascal's triangle when I construct each of the binomial coefficients using this and as I see I see that there's a triangular representation of this entire thing which is called the Pascal's triangle which we're going to discuss in the session.